Oh my gosh. I, it looks like he just cannot get enough of media attention. Now he's doing <laughs> he's doing the most out here, y'all. He sure is. He is doing the most. That when you thought you couldn't, you didn't hear. When you thought you heard enough. You thought you heard enough about Bishop Whitehead. No, 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 no. No, 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 it's not done. It's not done because he is back once again. Oh yeah, he's back. And this time it looks like him and Mayor Eric Adams, who is his buddy, are beefing with each other. Let's get all up into this. This, this is becoming the case of, yep, do anything for clout. What? Do anything for clout. Yeah, because look at this man's outfit. He got a Balenciaga outfit on with Gucci. A Gucci print book. Balenciaga outfit. And so what is the problem between Mayor Eric Adams, the New York City mayor, and Bishop Lamar? Whitehead, pow, pow, pow. That's right. He wants a weapon. The Brooklyn pastor who called for clergy members to get special, you know, gun privileges after getting robbed at gunpoint got a re got rebutted from his longtime pal, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who said Monday he doesn't support such a policy. So he has been turned down. So last Friday, the blinged out bishop, right, Lamar Whitehead, urged elected officials to pass a special law that would let members of the clergy pack heat to protect their flocks. But Mayor Adams, who has a long-standing friendship with Whitehead, threw cold water on that idea and was like, mm -mm. when asked whether the preach whether preachers should be given a special pass when it comes to being issued gun permits, Adams offered a one reply answer of no, especially with so much crime and everything that's going on in New York City right now. In case, in like, say, for example, you know, churches have been have been getting broken into lately. OK, churches have definitely have been broken into. There's one church right now or cathedral that is missing. Um, I think something that got stolen, like that their money and the offerings and stuff, something got robbed. Another place, church, um, some gold, a gold, uh, gold, you know, thing that they had in there in their um got stolen as well. So there are such things of break-ins. So if you have a weapon and you store it at that church, they break into that church, they now have access to your weapon. So that's one thing. And another thing, you're not trained to use guns and guns in church. Whew, that's, that's a heated debate right there. So Whitehead is singing the Second Amendment, praising, um, praising um, the Second Amendment and saying that he needs his weapons. He needs it. So he's been doing this since last week after thieves ran his jewels during Sunday service at his Canarsie church, leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. Cops said Whitehead and his family had $1 million in jewelry and more ripped off during the robbery, but the, NY, um, the New York Police Department still hasn't nabbed any suspects. The jarring theft, which was caught on videotape, prompted Whitehead on Friday to speak on how he would like to become a pistol packing preacher. They need to pass a law as, um, like, as quickly as possible, expeditiously, <laughs> that pastors of the houses of worship, anyone, 
and staff need to be able to have permits for firearms, he said last week. If the teachers can have it, we should have it as well. Bishop Whitehead preaches about the enemies of the church. The bishop who drives a Rolls Royce and is known for his designer threads even suggested authorities should overlook his past sins when approving a gun permit. Before becoming a man of the cloth, Whitehead did a stint in prison for identity theft, among other things. No matter if we have a record, it should be exempt, he said. So we should be able to bear arms, as the Constitution says. After being robbed, Whitehead came under the spotlight again after a woman alleged in a lawsuit that he basically took her for all her life savings. Yeah, a Brooklyn pastor, that's right, Lamar, is being accused mm -hmm, of taking this woman for all of her life savings, y'all. Let me just make sure. Um, I just want to make sure. Okay, just want to make sure. Yes, so the flashy Brooklyn um, preacher robbed during Sarah sued for stealing members' life savings. It don't get no mother flipping worse than that when you get accused of stealing life savings, y'all. That's right. That is pretty sad. A former member of his church alleges that he stole her retirement savings, a total of $90,000. Yeah, Bishop. <laughs> Man, it, it don't get no sadder than that. You know, what he didn't mention to the cops was a lawsuit filed by 56-year-old Pauline Anderson last year in Brooklyn Supreme Court that alleges he was taking her money to invest in one of his firms. It was her entire life savings of $90,000. Anderson did this because he promised to help her fix her credit so she could buy a home, the lawsuit states. The complainant said in November of 2020, the woman gave her pastor the money in a cashier's check with the understanding he would give her a hundred dollars monthly allowance to pay for her living expenses and help her buy and renovate a house. Instead, Whitehead never provided the woman with a receipt and only paid her a hundred dollars once in January of 2021. Besides that, um, Bishop Whitehead did not keep up his side of the bargain and even claimed he didn't have to pay her back for investing the $90,000. The lawsuit states that Mr. Whitehead fraudulently, once again, this fraud situation with him, induced Miss Anderson to liquidate her entire life savings to pay him the investment of $90,000, promising to use the funds to purchase and renovate a house for her. Ms. Anderson was instead left with nothing but a vague promise by Mr. Whitehead to pay the funds back in the future, followed by an assertion that he had no further obligations to do so, the filing alleges. While she did not get a receipt of the money, she kept text messages according to a few text messages submitted as um, exhibit to the lawsuit. He told her that he had invested the money, but she would not be able to get a return soon because it is not easy to access it. During a text message exchange on May 19, 2021, Whitehead typed to Anderson, and for the record, anything that was given to me in a donation, unless it it's attached to a contract, I was making investments that what I do. He also called the woman a, a son of a liar and promised God would deal deal with her. In, in rebuttal, she said, all of this because of what? Because you took my money that you refused to pay back and now you're quoting scriptures to serve your purpose. This is so offensive. And did you just go there? You said you were a man of integrity. The good bishop denies wrongdoing and shifted the conversation to unfavorable character of one of her relatives. Her son was a member of, her, of my ministry who was removed because he was um, lacking of integrity. 
it's a lawsuit because of who I am. Everybody that tried to sue me because of my celebrity status is just going to keep going in and I'm going in and trying to do what they do. What celebrity status is he talking about? What celebrity status? The lawsuit confirms Anderson's son, Rashid Anderson, did introduce her to Whitehead's ministry. Months after this exchange, Bishop accidentally emailed the son a copy of a contract for a 4.4. So wait a minute. Was this, did he, how much did he give her? How much did she give him? Because in one instance, it says $90,000, but in another, it says way different that it was just $90 million. So something's got to be wrong. There's got to be 90, maybe it was $900,000. So this might be $900,000 of an investment, not actually $90,000. So this might actually be $900,000. A nine hundred thousand dollar investment, which is almost close to one million dollars, he took from this woman. Wow. So he emailed her son a contract for four point four million, um, a mansion in Sandal River, New Jersey, which he was planning to buy. The lawsuit claims Anderson's money was used as a down payment for the property. Bishop Whitehead owes $1.6 million for a home in Paramus, New Jersey, but he may be on hard times. The apartments he bought in Hartford, Connecticut have fallen in default as well because the bishop has not made his mortgage payment since June. Public records state this purchase never went through. Still, Anderson believes um, Bishop, the bishop is a crook. Bishop Whitehead says he went to jail and is a new man. But as of last week, the robbery proves the streets are watching. Oh, shoot. The streets is watching, yo. <laughs> oh, the streets is watching. But here's another little thing. Now, all of a sudden, you're going through all these problems of money trouble, all these problems you're having with money trouble. And now, all of a sudden, you have a robbery where people get in a, BM, a, Mer a BMW or Mercedes Benz and take off. And look, dude, you did this for insurance so you could get me, so you could get liquid again and get money again flowing so you can pay off these homes that you owe money on. This is what it's starting to look like. And it looked like you ain't stopped crooking because you don't took this woman's money last year. So you haven't changed your bag. You know, you haven't changed anything. It's just a new, you just doing a new scheme. That's all you're doing, Mr. Whitehead. That's all you doing is coming up with a new scheme. That's it. Use a new man with a new scheme. That's all. Adams has more than once described himself as a mentor to the pastor. Oh, sucky, sucky now. And now people been looking at Mayor Adams, Eric Adams, real funky lately, y'all. Okay, especially since he was giving people that were real close to him jobs that some people felt he they couldn't be they weren't he what they these people that he was giving jobs to were not qualified for these jobs. Ooh, skim scamming shamming. It's a lot going on here. It's a lot going on here indeed. Ooh, we hmm. But when asked last week how we re how how do you react if those allegations is true? Adam noted that no one is above the law. So in other words, if it turns out that Whitehead really took this money from this lady and was supposed to pay her this money and this robbery, alleged robbery and all this back money owed and all of this turned out to be true. Eric is going to do what Eric got to do. He going to separate himself from, you know, Bishop Lamar real quick, Mr. Whitehead real quick. And he, like he said, no one's above the law. But you think we done with Bishop? No, Bishop, we, we not done. Because guess what? Homeboy is really out here doing everything he can for the, yep, he's doing everything for the cloud. Because he's in, in the news once again for what? 
reenacting the whole crime once again. That's right. Bishop Lamar Whitehead reenacts the heist in the first Brooklyn church service since the viral pow, pow, pow robbery. And I'm going to wear my Gucci, he says. He got on Gucci in the Gucci print. Look, oh my gosh, Lord Jesus. Balenciaga and Gucci going to come for your ass. Because how you got Balenciaga and Gucci on top of each other in that suit? Boy, that suit hot. <laughs> Who got him that suit? That suit looked like he got that suit from Stan from, um, from Martin. No, Stan who owned the radio station on Martin. So the flashy Brooklyn minister robbed that gunpoint. Mm-hmm reenacted his robbie by laying down on the floor to reenact the heist we could have been planning our funerals he said but we made it oh yeah during his ceremony in the rented out canarsie workspace that doubles as his church whitehead reflected on the events of last sunday and the video that went viral worldwide showing him lying down in the middle of the sermon as the crooks raided the room I got a phone call, Whitehead said. They said, you're in the Ukraine. <laughs> Lamar was preaching at a Leaders of Tamar International Ministry on Remsen Avenue near Avenue D about 11.15 a.m. on July 24th when them cooks came in and got them and said, yo, all right, all right, all right. Oh, man, ain't that um Matthew McConaughey thing? All right, all right, all right now. Oh, wow. So it, you know, things ain't, you know, Bishop ain't stopping his flow because Whitehead rolled up to his church in a Rolls Royce convertible Sunday and preached to a crowd of about 20 worshipers. Lord have mercy. He discussed a Bible passage where King David brutally smites with God's blessing those who stole from him. Whitehead wore a Gucci and Balenciaga suit Sunday with Gucci loafers along with a large ring on his finger showcasing an oversized red gemstone at one point whitehead removed a heavy gold watch and placed it on the table by his pulpit gosh darn mm -hmm. he sure did his family and friends expressed concern over what he was planning to wear to church he said i'm gonna wear my gucci he says mm -hmm. he told the parishioners because god said you are my chosen vessel he didn't tell me i could not wear what i wanted to wear he said why he gotta wear gucci he said mm -hmm. because i want to it is my civil right to wear what I want to wear, and we are a church of wealth. We're not a church of poverty, even though you're surrounded by poverty and the building. Oh, ooh, child. I, ooh. Lord, please, Jesus, please. Ooh. He said it's a church of wealth. Like, Y'all can't make this up mm -hmm. as he passed the collection plate around. Mm -hmm. Shoot. <laughs> I can't, you can't make this, you can't make this up. You cannot make this mess up. Uh, you can't, you just cannot make any of this up. But I got to show you these pictures, okay? Before I head on out of here, I got to show you these pictures uh, right here of this man laid, laid up on this floor. Do you see him laid up on that floor? reenacting the robbery yes yes indeed that's what he's doing reenacting the robbery here's the robbers right there look at him with his rolls royce huh look at the rolls royce okay and he's talking about i don't know why y'all getting on me about my my my, my gucci and my balenciaga we are a church of wealth but I can't tell this church is a wealth. If this church was wealth, then I expect to see a mega church. I expect to see nice, beautiful, painted church in the front. The front look nice. I'm expecting to see plants in the front of the church. I'm expecting to see the sidewalk nice and clean and well manicured and maintained and stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Less than half the seats were filled, but a parishioner who only gave her name as Tanya supported Whitehead. People are talking about, oh, maybe he was the one that set it up himself. It could be an insurance scam. Yeah, girl, it can be. Mm -hmm. Or he a bling bling pastor, she said. If he work hard, why can't we wear what we want to wear? Girl, bye. Go sit down. You, <laughs> you would think that there would be more support, like more pastors. They don't want no parts of this mess right here. Girl, bye. 
we're the community out here to support him, girl. Mm -mm. What I find is that he's not getting a lot of sympathy. I wonder why, because he crooked, girl. Okay, he's being accused of robbing a woman of either ninety thousand dollars or nine hundred and something thousand dollars of this woman's life savings. He's been convicted before of identity theft. He's been convicted of larceny. He has served time, and he's still skim scamming and flim flamming out here. White has said some worshippers claiming that they were too scared to come to church were just looking for an excuse to skip out when they shash up the church when they shot up the club last week he said you was back there the next week oh no he didn't missing parishioners too traumatized to attend included the pastor's wife and children who white has said had not stopped crying all week because she missing them jewelries one of the crooks held a thing to the, uh, the eight year month them eight month old daughter head now parishioner crystal moore said she wasn't at service during the robbery, but that she felt secure Sunday morning to attend. I really enjoyed the service. I wasn't even thinking about the robbery half the time. I really was just enjoying. The bishop also spoke at length about the recent surface lawsuit accusing him of defrauding a former um, you know, parishioner out of her life savings after promising to buy her home with the money. If that was my parishioner, now he's denying the oh my gosh boy you you doing too much you playing too much you playing in the lord's face too much now you denying that this woman is a person how are you gonna do that and this suit and this colors don't even gosh damn match where you look if you would have wore a cream or even a beige shirt with that it would have been nice but you putting on pink with that tell me right there you don't know your colors baby Ooh, you yeah you is different oh you giving me haitian vibes baby you giving me haitian vibes yeah, mm -hmm. someone please call 911. Oh, yeah, you give me that vibes. Mm -hmm. We are they. Oh, it's an elderly lady that, and that's my savings, Whitehead said mockingly. That's what the en enemy wants you to believe. You're okay. On Friday, Whitehead raised eyebrows when he held a press conference to urge elected officials to pass a law allowing clergymen to, to carry the, the peace to protect themselves and their congregation. They don't like Bishop Whitehead because I am God made, not man made, he said on Sunday to the critics. Boy, bye. You don't need boy, bye, boy, bye. So, y'all, comment below and tell me what you think about all of this dang hot mess right here. Mm, 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 mm hmm. Drama, drama. And Eric, Eric Adams is like, look, if it's proven to be what it's going to be, uh-uh, I want no part to that. I want no part as he out here trying to get people, all the people money. Mm, look at that. Trying to get people more, to, to give up the money, huh? Mm, mm, mm. He done skim scam and rob these people of their damn life savings. That's a damn shame out here. Mm, a scandal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yo, y'all comment below and let me know what y'all think. And that is the hot ass mother flipping tea that I got to give to you about this whole situation. So it looked like Eric Adams ain't playing with his ass no more. Okay. And he going to eventually try and distance himself. He was like, I was mentoring this man, but I, you can't, sometimes you can't mentor everybody. Okay. All right. Now on that note, you see what these people be doing out here, do anything for that clout. Damn right. They do. And on that note, I'm mother flipping out. I got stuff. Go. Okay. I know. Bye. Mm -mm. just too much. Mm, mm, mm.